All right, so we've talked about a lot of different concepts uh, so far, but when it comes time to working some homework problems, I think we need to have kind of a list of handy equations that we can we can use. So let's uh, have this little interstitial lecture just being a review of different useful equations. So the first thing we started out with was talking about displacement. After we did our mathematical preliminaries, said so that the displacement between two points in a body was the difference between the final position and the initial position of the body. Of course, we rewrote this a little bit differently, and we said that the final position would be equal to the initial position plus the displacement. We talk about mappings or transformations between the original and the deformed or final configuration. And we said that in order for us to have an admissible deformation, that we had to have a Jacobian that was greater than zero. Now the way that we can determine the Jacobian is to construct a matrix based on partial derivatives of these relations in the final and in the initial configuration. So this would be a 3 by 3 matrix and we take the determinant of that, if that's greater than 0, then we have an admissible deformation. Based on what we've written here, we can also write this as uh, in terms of displacements and this is where I said we had to be very careful when we write these uh, Jacobian in terms of displacements we have to make sure that we also include the Kronecker delta term delta ij partial of ui with respect to xj or with a common notation ui comma j. We defined our green safe and not strain tensor based on some math uh, as 2 epsilon ij being equal to partial of ui with respect to xj plus the partial of uj with respect to xi plus these higher order terms which we cannot neglect if we have finite deformation but we're going to see we can neglect them when we have small deformations partial of uk with respect to xi times partial of uk with respect to xj we talked about our index notation and all that. We went through and we decided we could write this in terms of the change in length of line segments in the new and in the old configurations. Or we normalized by this and wrote this in terms of unit direction vectors okay, so we can either write this in terms of the n or we can write it as partial of xi ds times uh, partial of uh, uh, to be a straight d I guess um, straight d xi by ds straight d xj by ds and then we can write this in terms of uh, these unit vectors here. So we said that this term was the magnification factor and we played around with the algebra just a little bit and we wrote it uh, this way as well. We talked about something called engineering strain. We use the symbol little e for us. That's the change in length divided by the initial length. Or we can write it in terms of the magnification ratio minus 1. If we want to get um, the change in length or the stretching of a particular line segment, these two direction vectors would be the same. That would give us an idea of the normal strains. 
diagonal terms of the strain tensor. I say the stretch of a line segment. Uh, I'm not talking about the stretch that you might see in hyperelasticity. So this is just kind of an informal use of that term. We can map old and new unit vector terms by the use of this equation. where we have the new unit vector and the deformed configuration, the script and I. In terms of partial derivatives of the displacement field in the undeformed unit vectors, off in any particular direction. And then we started talking about the change in angle to get a look at shearing strains between two line segments. And if we wanted the angle, then we can evaluate our dot product. Of course, these being unit vectors, those magnitudes would be equal to 1. So this is the old angle or the original configuration. And if we looked at the script in and the script M in the final or the deformed configuration, we can take a look at the new angle. Uh, cosine capital theta. And then we defined our shearing strains, say between segment one and segment two, for finite deformations. one plus two times magnification factor for segment one, one plus two times magnification factor for segment two, square root of all that, cosine of capital theta is equal to the cosine of the original angle plus, I'm going to write it this way this time, two epsilon ij, n i n n i m j, where we have two different vectors two different direction vectors. Okay, so I think um, as you do some homework around this time, this uh, page of equations will be kind of helpful for you. Now one other thing I wanted to bring up, one of our previous interstitial lectures talked about the, the Cauchy strain tensor and we've been talking about the green St. Venant strain tensor. Okay, instead of writing it in terms of unit vectors, we can write the difference between the square of the lengths in the original and deformed configurations, ds squared minus d script s squared minus ds squared, is equal to 2 epsilon ij dxi dxj. Well, we can actually relate the green St. Venant strain tensor and the Cauchy strain tensor through this relation, 2 epsilon ij is equal to cij minus Kronecker delta ij, where cij is our Cauchy strain tensor, partial of xi k with respect to xi, partial of xi k with respect to xj.
So I wanted to point that out. And again, trying to emphasize that there are many definitions of strain. And the, the one that you would want to use depends on the context of your problem. And likewise, if you were to read a paper or to write a paper dealing with strain, it's very important to establish what measure of strain you're using and how you're defining that so that people that read your paper can understand uh, what the context of that is. If you take a class in general continuum mechanics, um, you'll likely get even more involved into different strain measures and how they're all related to one another. In our class, we're going to very quickly simplify this uh, for small deformations. And so the exact definition of the strain tensor won't really matter a whole lot because for small deformations, almost all the definitions kind of revert to the same basic um, implementation. Finite deformations of different matter. And if we get a chance to get into hyperelasticity later in the semester, we will um, have to be a little bit more careful and go back and revisit some of these issues. All right, so that's just a quick one to uh, kind of review some useful equations. In the next lecture, I believe, uh, will be another interstitial where we'll give an example of using some of these equations.